Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. So we are continuing our dental anatomy sessions. So far we finished maxillary central incisor, maxillary lateral incisor, maxillary canine, then we jumped to mandibular canine. Now we are back to maxillary, that is the first premolar. So we finished anterior session, I mean anterior teeth. Now we are into the posterior teeth. Okay, so posterior teeth are two premolars and three molars. So premolars are so named because they are placed between the anterior teeth and the molars. So it is pre to molars. It is before molars. That is why this name premolars. So premolar assist canine and molars in tearing and chewing food. So we know the function of teeth that is incising, then tearing and grinding okay so this premolar it helps tearing that is function of canines and grinding that is a function of molars it has got two cusp that is why it is also known as bicuspids so cuspid we learned that is canine this is bicuspid because it has got two cusp and it has got two roots Okay, it has got two roots and two cusp and the tooth number so we have three systems so which are the systems the systems are universal Zygmunt T. Palmer system and FTI system so in universal it will be one two three four five 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, then comes 12. This is universal system. And Sigmonti Palmer system is 4, and FTA system is 1, 4, and 2, 4. Now, the chronology. Chronology the first evidence of calcification by 1.5 to 1.75 years. Enamel completion. This is years, canines were in months, central incisor and lateral incisor were in months. That is the first evidence of calcification. Then we have enamel completion by five to six years. Eruption is very late, 10 to 11 years. I mean compared to enamel completion. And finally root completion by 12 to 13 years. And the dimension? The length of crown is 8.5 and the root is 14. Mesiodistal diameter of crown is 7 and 5 at contact and cervix area. And buccolingual is 9 and 8 at contact and cervix area. The curvature of line in mesial and distal is 1 and 0. Okay, distal side it is 0. So we have occlusal surface in place of incisal surface on posterior teeth so we'll start with the buccal side not labial side so this is buccal side so crown is pentagonal shape you can see here crown is pentagonal shaped and crown closely resembles to maxillary canine and second premolar the mesial margin joins the mesio occlusal slope to create an obtuse mesio occlusal angle and the contour of the mesial outline is concave from the contact area to the cervical line. Okay, so that is a, a peculiar feature of maxillary first premolar. There is a concavity. And the mesial slope of the buccal cusp is longer than the distal slope, which is the opposite of canine. Okay, usually the mesial slope is shorter than the distal slope. Okay. Here, the mesial slope of buccal cusp is longer than the distal slope. And distal occlusal angle is a little less prominent and the cervical concavity is not as deep. And the occlusal margin of the tooth is similar to the incisal margin of the maxillary canine and there is presence of buccal ridge. And mesiobuccal and distobuccal developmental depressions on each side of buccal ridge 
now we have the lingual aspect the crown tapers towards the lingual aspect okay you can see the uh, outline of the buccal cusp from the lingual side and the lingual cusp is shorter than the buccal cusp and it is smooth from the cervical portion to the area near to cusp tip and the cusp tip is pointed with mesial and distal slope meeting at an angle about 90 degree small portion of the buccal cusp can be seen from the aspect i mentioned it already and it is convex in all direction there is no clearly defined lingual ridge mesial and distal outlines are normally somewhat uh, convex and shorter than the same outlines on the buccal surface the cusp tip is not as sharply pointed as the buccal one okay and mesio occlusal slope is shorter than the disto occlusal slope now we have the mesial aspect from the mesial and distal aspect both buccal and lingual cusps are visible and there is a well developed mesial marginal ridge and a mesial marginal developmental groove is present in the middle of mesial surface is a mesial developmental depression which is continuous beyond the cervical line which is very peculiar for maxillary first premolar on the mesial side there is a developmental depression so this is a mesial concavity so shape of the mesial surface is trapezoid and buccal outline is generally convex uh, with the height of contour on the cervical third and lingually the outline takes the form of even a arc with the height of contour on the middle third. Occlusal margin is irregularly concave and the majority of it is made up of mesial marginal ridge. And a prominent mesial marginal groove is usually present intenting the occlusal margin almost two third of the way from the buccal to the lingual outline. Now we have the distal aspect. So there is no developmental depression or groove on this aspect instead it is convex at almost all points and the curvature of the cervical line is less on this aspect compared to mesial just like any other tooth the contact area is near the junction of occlusal and middle third and distal side is remarkably similar to the mesial surface although it is slightly shorter occlusal gingivally and lingual margin is almost symmetrical and is quite convex especially in the middle third where the height of contour is located and occlusally the distal is similar to mesial aspect except that marginal ridge is located at a more cervical line there is normally no marginal groove and finally we have the occlusal aspect so within cusp ridge and the marginal ridges the following are present that is uh, the tip of buccal and lingual cusp and the buccal and lingual triangular ridge and disto buccal developmental groove and the distal and mesial triangular fossa and the central groove all you can see here that is a central fossa a triangular fossa and the distal uh, buccal developmental groove and buccal and lingual triangular ridge and the buccal and lingual cusp the outline of crown can be described as a hexagonal or six sided and it is wider buccolingually than mesiodistally prominent buccal ridge is primary contributed to generally convex buccal outline and lingual margin is evenly convex almost in a semicircle Proximal margins are relatively straight and they converge towards the lingual. Now finally the root. So most maxillary first premolar have two roots but one and three roots can also be seen. So you need to be very cautious while doing an extraction of first premolar. Two roots uh, that is buccal and lingual roots. Buccal portion of the root resemble canine and the root when viewed from proximal side shows a big trunk and bifurcation area from where the buccal and lingual root separates and there is a developmental depression as seen on the mesial aspect of the trunk so that is all about maxillary first premolar 
the special feature of this tooth is that concavity which is present on the mesial side and the lots of features are on occlusal side uh, such as central groove trancular fossa and those developmental grooves so this is also commonly asked execution maxillary first premolar okay so i'll come up with maxillary second premolar in my next session thank you Thank you.